This video is on Trig in Tamura. Um, I thought I'd quickly run down first before we do any questions what's expected of you in, 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 in Tamura in terms of Trig knowledge. So firstly, they're both obviously non-calculated papers, so you must know your exact values. Here's the exact value table, um, so these are the ones that you'd be expected to know. Um, except you must also be able to extend these values to further values down the line, right? So you'd need to know what sine of 150 is, for example, or, or cos of 200 and um, uh, 40 or whatever. Um, so you need to have some kind of system for that. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that my system is to draw the graphs. Um, and, and, and once I've drawn the graph, I can say, okay, well, root 3 over 2 is somewhere up here. That has a solution at 60, which is 60 forward from this root. So therefore, 60 back from this root gives you that it's 120 is the other intersection here. And then likewise, way over here, 360 plus another 60 gets you to 420 uh, for the root after that. Um, so you need to have that kind of system and you also need to be um, very confident when looking at this kind of value and, and uh, similarly drawing a slightly altered graph or adjusting the, the range that you look in and then solving later. Again, whatever system you'd prefer to run. It's also worth noting you'd be expected as well to find tan values in exactly the same way, even though usually at A level and certainly at GCSE you're only expected to draw the sine and cos graph, you are expected to draw the tan graph as well in Tamura. Um, so that's also relevant. Um, the other thing to say would be you are also expected to do all of this in radians as well. So anything that I just said, um, although I was using degrees for all of that, it, it applies in radians as well. The questions seem to be fairly random whether or not they seem to like just flip a coin every time it comes up to see whether or not they want to write the question in degrees or radians. Um, so again, you, you just need to have you need to be aware, maybe one way of doing it would just to know this one is this one and this one is this one and so on um, and have some kind of system, the same exact same system for finding all the further values here needs to apply here as well. Um, these are the only two identities in this spec. Tan is sine over cos and sine squared plus cos squared equals one. Um, if you've watched my videos, you'll see that I often use the compound and double angle formulas. For example, in a video that I made, I think only a couple of days ago, I used um, here, I replaced that with minus cos two theta which made it much easier for me to sketch. I just sketch this one, sketch this one, and then count the intersections. Um, but that's not necessary knowledge. Although, considering that you, of course, need to know this for your regular A-level maths, I would suggest, despite the fact that it's not on the spec, that you just know that because it can help you out um, from doing um, unnecessarily difficult things if you know these formulas, just like I did in this question. If you want to watch me do this question, um, it was in the uh, how many solutions, I think, video that I made um, the other day. Okay, so I'd recommend that you know this. Now that we've gone through all that, um, let's actually do some questions. I'll start off with a very easy one. The, the question paper is up here every time I do one of these, and the number is, of course, here, so you can look up these questions yourself. Um, so here, the, the objective, um, it, it, well, it's a sine squared plus cos squared. So in A-level maths, you'd always like make one of them into a 1 minus cos squared, or the other one a 1 minus sine squared or whatever. And you can do that here. Um, that will work perfectly fine. I think I've just been a little bit flexy. I have, yeah. I've just said, well, eight of these is the same as four of them plus four of them. And then this is just four lots of sine squared plus cos squared, which is one from the identity, and that's just equal to 4, because it's 4 times 1, and then we've just got the sine squared. You could have just replaced this with the 1 minus sine squared. I think I'm just being a little bit fun here, because I get bored of doing everything the same way every time. Um, of course, you can rearrange this, uh, divide by 4. You'll often see something like this, because of course this means sine x all squared, is what this 2 is doing here. So square root both sides, remember the plus or minus, of course, and you get root 3 over 2, which is, of course, one of the values that you need to know. We notice at this point that this question is in radians, so we need to be comfortable drawing the sine graph in radians from 0 to 2 pi, which is the range here, um, and putting down plus root 3 over 2 and minus root 3 over 2, and knowing what all of these solutions are. Now, in this question, we actually don't need to know what all of these solutions are. We just need the largest one, um, which is clearly going to be this one here. Um, but the principal solution that you should know off the top of your head is that sine inverse of root 3 over 2 is, um, well, if you're working in degrees, that's absolutely fine. It's 60 degrees, right? And then you can convert that to radians if you want to as pi over 3. That's certainly something that I used to do at A-level when I was um, more familiar with the degrees. I, I worked in degrees, and then I just knew all the conversions. So I can now say it's pi over 3. Now that I've got that, I can say, well, this solution, if this one was pi over 3 forward from, from the root, this solution is pi over 3 backwards from this root, which is at pi. So this is here is at pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. I didn't really need to know that because I want this one, remember. But of course, this one is just going to be this root backwards pi over 3. So 2 pi minus pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. 
and that'll be my answer to that question. So that's quite a nice, uh, a nice easy one to start with. Now we're getting to some more complicated ones. Now the reason I'm choosing this question is it's from this paper here, but it's basically identical to two or three, here's two of them I've written down, two, two or three other papers that were, other questions in other papers that were basically identical. So they really like asking this sort of question. And um, the way that I like to do it, you could expand out and consider what happens if you do, um, but the way that I like to do this question um, is to consider the two factors separately. So for this thing to be greater or equal to zero, either this is greater than zero and that is as well, or they're both less than zero. I know in this case you can expand out and you can and you might be able to do some other thing, things, but this um, method of saying either this one greater, this one greater, or this one this, this one less, works for these questions as well. So it's quite a nice little method to use here. Of course, we can solve all of these things separately. So let's start here. Um, move the two sine x over, divide by two, and we need sine to be less than or equal to half. So we draw the sine graph, and we know, of course, from exact values, uh, this question is in radians, just note, um, that sine of pi over six is a half, because it's 30 degrees, and you can do the conversion if you're doing it that way. Um, which means, of course, pi over six forward from, from the root means pi over six backwards from here. Pi minus pi over six is five pi over six. And so we have this, this bound now, just bear in mind that it goes up to pi, so this part of the graph is pointless. Um, this this sine of x, the red curve, is underneath a half, so underneath a half um, when you're between 0 and pi over 6, or 5 pi over 6 and pi. So I can jot that down and then look at this one. Of course I can draw the cos graph between 0 and 2 pi, I, I really just need it between pi though, really. Um, and it's greater than 0 between 0 and pi over 2. And now, because we needed both of those things to be true at the same time, because we need them both to be positive, to multiply to make something positive, um, I just need to compare these ranges and see where the intersection of them is. So, uh, so stuff that's just up from zero is okay with both, and you can do that all the way until pi over six, when you lose this bound, when you when you um, start getting over a half, and this is wrong. So you can go from zero to pi over six, but then you can't do this section at all because this one is, is beyond and, and, and negative by then. So the only thing that matches here is between 0 and pi over 6. And so for this case to work, I need this. And then I consider this case, and this is much quicker now because it, it's the same stuff but backwards, right? I need sine to be greater than half, which is clearly just in between those two points. And I need cos to be less than um, 0, which is between pi over 2 and pi. And again, compare these ranges, um, and, uh, and you'll see that um, I can go from pi over 2 which is negative here and, and above the line here, all the way until 5 pi over 6, and then I have to stop because then I'll go underneath the half thing. So it's going to be there. And so the combination of these things, and again, it's the combination of these two because it's either this case or that one, will give me this answer here. And that's the same exact method for these two questions. So you might want to look these ones up and have a go doing those now if you want to. It's just going to be the same method. Um, another one that I thought I'd look at, I'm going to go through two slightly weirder ones now. Um, although this one you can do in a more standard way. I'll do this one in two different ways. Um, the first thing you can do with here is you could go way back to like year eight, year nine, and look at the standard definition of tan, which you were taught there, which is just in a right angled triangle, it's the opposite over the adjacent. And if that's worth two, then I can just say this is a triangle with side lengths two and one. Now, this triangle is obviously horribly drawn because this length is is yeah sure um but and also because theta is between these two values which clearly is is, is not going to work in a triangle but the logic still kind of holds because i can just do pythagoras and say that's root five and therefore say that cos of theta is one over root five adjacent over hypotenuse um, which i can rationalize for root five over five so okay the answer is this one right except again this picture fails because the angle is completely wrong right so actually if your angle is between 180 and 360 draw the tan graph um tan uh, is 2 a couple of times, but between 180 and 360, it's 2 between 180 and 270. So I can surmise from this here that the angle is between 180 and 270, and because that's where 2 tan of 2, um, or tan theta equals 2, lies. And of course, now I can draw the cos graph, and I can say, well, in between 180 and 270, um, notice how we've seamlessly swapped back to degrees in this question, between 180 and 270, cos is negative. So therefore, this isn't the answer, it's actually the negative answer that I need. Um, so it's going to be that one there. But the size is okay. This thing here gave me the size of it, and then I needed to use this logic to find positive or negative. Um, I can do that in a much more standard way if you don't want to do any of this, which is you can just say tan and sine over cos using the identity that we saw in the start, and then you can use the other identity to say sine is plus minus root 1 minus cos squared. Of course, times like cos square out both sides, so the positive 
but the plus minus goes away. And of course you can solve that to make this, which is the same as what we got before. And then you have to use the same logic to deduce whether this is the plus or the minus, as, as I did before with the graphs. Um, so another weird question here, um, and this one is, I think, this kind of question is all about just keeping a cool head, right? You're not expected to know anything about summations of trig graphs or trig or trig functions, right? This isn't anything like a standard result. You might not have seen anything like this before, and that's completely fine. What they're testing is whether you can keep a cool head and figure something out about this. You're not expected to, to know anything that you can just go to. So, okay, what's the obvious thing we can do? Well, we can just play around with it. We can just go, okay, what happens if you put k is 0 into here, and then k is 1, and then k is 2, and so on up to 90? Well, it looks a bit like this. Um, putting in k is 0 just gives you 10, k is 1 gives you 10 plus 90, k is 2, 10 plus 180, and so on, all the way into the end when I can't be bothered to work out what it is. And now we look at this, and again, none of these are my trig values, none of these are my exact values, and bear in mind you have to know your exact values to know that these are none of them, but none of these are any exact values that I know. So the question must be asking me to notice something, or, or, or to be able to figure something out about these that I previously don't know. So let's get out our graph and, and notice how much of a common theme this has been in these questions. I've drawn multiple graphs every single question. You've got to be sketching graphs. If, if you've done a trig question and you haven't got a graph anywhere on the page, you've done said trig question wrong. Let's get our graph and let's just look at these. Sine 10, well that's just beyond zero, right? So it's just a little bit up like this, right? That's sine of 10, just a, a small positive number here. Sine of 100 is just beyond the turning point at 90, right? So it's just beyond that, just down here, very close to 1, but a little bit less than 1. Sine of 190 is just beyond this root here. And then I think, oh, actually, okay, well, looking at the symmetry that I've been doing all video, this is 10 along from this root, and this is 10 along from this one. So whatever value sine of 10 is, sine of 190 is that same value but negative. So actually, when I add these two things up, they cancel out. And likewise, when I go to 270, that's just beyond the turning point again at 270, sorry, 280, just beyond the turning point at 270. So therefore, it's going to cancel out with this one here. And so every, uh, and when I look at the next one, which is going to be, I mean, we add 90 every time. So the next one is going to be 10 degrees beyond, beyond from 360. And then the next one after that is going to be where this one was and then where this one was, they're just going to repeat over and over again, right? Because they're repeating 90 degrees and every 90 just puts you to the same place on this graph over and over again. But of course, what I can say is every batch of four results are just going to cancel each other out. The first cancels with a third, the second with the fourth. So every batch of four is just going to go away. So, okay, well, how many batches of four do I have? Uh, and just be very careful here, there are 91 terms in this sum because we start counting at zero. So there are 91 terms. They cancel four at a time. Four lots of 22 groups will cancel out and you'll be left with three terms left over. And those last, very last three terms, because this repeats itself every four as well as canceling out every four, those last three terms are just going to be these three here right? And so, again, this one will cancel with this one, and you'll be left with this, which is equivalent. It will be much further down the line, obviously, but it will be equivalent to sine of 100. Um, and that will be our answer. So, again, this, this question, all about three things, really. Keeping a cool head, drawing a sketch, and trying to figure out what you can from it, right? You're not expected to know anything about this going into it. They're just seeing whether you can figure something out on your own that you've never seen before. So, keep a cool head, draw a graph. Let's do one more question about trig, which will be this one here. Um, a very difficult question here. I, you notice I've done quite a lot of questions towards the end of a paper. These, these are quite hard questions, right? You, and, and again, you're not expected to get every question, certainly not the ones towards the end. So don't worry too much, but let's go through this one together. The first thing I'll do is I'll just replace this horrible object with y, so I can write sine squared of y equals three quarters. Um, I, I'll notice at this point, although it's possible just to notice this later instead, that y is always positive, because 4 to the power of something is always positive, times by 60 is always still positive. So, so I've got sine squared of y is 3 quarters, and I don't need to bother looking for negative y values, because they don't work. So okay, and notice how this is the same thing as we saw in the first question of the video. Um, we've also now back in degrees. We square root, and we get plus or minus root 3 over 2. And we draw the sine graph again, this time in degrees. And we say, okay, well, plus root 3 over 2, minus root 3 over 2. And we've got all these solutions here. 
Um, so, so if it's plus root 3 over 2, we get the solutions of 60, again, which is an exact value we should just know. 120, because of symmetry, we've done this one before. The next ones down the line would be 60 beyond 360, so that's 420. Then 480, because it's 60 above again, um, and, and so on. And here we've got, well, it's 60 beyond 180 by symmetry, so that's 240. 60 beyond that is 300. Um, and, and, and likewise, you'd, you'd, you'd find some more if you kept going. It's, uh, this one is 240 plus 360 degrees, so that's the rotation gets you to 600, and then, yeah, cool. Okay, so we've got all these, but we know we made this substitution here, right? So we can put that back in, and we can divide everything by 60. And now we have to notice here, and this is the only bit about this entire question that we haven't really covered in this video before, we have to notice here that 4 to the power cos theta, well, these values over here, the 7 and the 8, that involves you doing 4 to the power something bigger than 1, because these are bigger than 4. And cos of theta, just like sine, is forever trapped between 1 and minus 1. So we cannot do 4 to the power something bigger than 1 here, and so we cannot get any of those values, but we can get these two. We can get 4 to the power something is 1 by making this 0, 4 to the power 0 is 1, and we can also make 4 to the something um, 2 by making this a half, because the square root of 4 is, is 2. So th we have these two things to look at, and then over here, um, again, if we replace the y with, with this here, divide by 60, all of these are bigger than 4, so we can't possibly make them, but we can do 4 to the power 1 is 4, and we have these three things to solve. Um, so we draw the cos graph now, we don't need the sine one anymore, so I've just replaced it, and we say, well, when is cos 0? Um, well, it's uh, 90, 270, and then 90 beyond 360 is 450, and so on. When is cos a half? That's an exact value we should know. It's when it's at um, 60 degrees, actually this thing that I copied off of Google tells me straight away, but it's at 60 degrees, we should know that one. Um, and then of course, by symmetry, it will be 60 forward from zero, so 60 backwards from 360 gives me 300, uh, and then 60 forward from 360 gets me 420, and so on. When is cos one? Well, clearly at zero, 360, 720, and so on. And then we've just got a very difficult thing to understand what the question is on about right at the end here. It's saying that this whole equation, which has an infinite number of solutions, look, because I have these three sets of infinite solutions, Apparently, I only have three solutions, so I must be choosing an x value such that I, I, I cut off almost all of these values except for three of them. So, okay, if you choose x to be 10, for instance, you're only going to get one solution, this one here. All of the other solutions are bigger than 10. So if you exclude your range to just be stopping at 10, we just get this one. So, okay, we need to be a bit bigger to get three solutions. Um, so if we make it up to 60, we get our second solution. And then all the way to 90, we get our third solution. So there, if we make 9, x 90, we'll have three solutions if we make x 90. And the question is asking, how much bigger can you make x such that you still have three solutions? And we look through our lists here, and we notice the next one is 270. So we can make x, for example, 200, and we still only have three solutions. We can get it as high as 270, and the moment that it's 270, then we'd have a fourth solution, which we don't want. So x can range anywhere from 90, which is what we need to collect this third solution here, all the way up to 270, where we collect this fourth solution that we don't want, and therefore the answer is this. So again, that question there is question 19, right? So it's a hard question, requires quite a lot of thought. You need to figure out stuff about these exponentials, which is quite hard, but you just, again, drawing the sketch graphs, knowing the exact values, keeping a cool head, you know, this substitution was quite nice here, um, and then finally just kind of getting ahead around what this question here means. But almost all of this question was still just the stuff that I laid out at the start, right? Sketching the graphs, knowing the trig values, and, and that will help, and that will basically get you through, I think, basically every two-mirror question with trig. And of course, um, the last thing is practice, of course. You just need to practice a bunch of these questions. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you so much for watching.